Hey everybody, I um, got my package from Shapeways. So let's look at these uh, 3D printed items and see how they are. Hopefully they'll be what I expect. I will be opening this package in front of the camera for nothing. Kind of standard. Give you some goodies. Order number, and I only think I got two pieces in this order. I got a new neck valve thing for 3PO. And now this is the same as what's on my costume now, but I want to make molds of them so that I can just use them at will. So I got that. And I got knee piston for this back here. And it looks like it came out real nice. Let's see. So, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video, but I had this. There it is. Looks really good. It's a definitely heavier duty print than my previous versions that I had. They're uh, considerably thinner inside, so this feels very strong. Um, see, it's got the little the knurling. I'll just light up here. I don't know if this is close enough. It's got its little knurling, and uh, this is the end. Now, the reason I made it in two pieces is because to pay to print this whole thing costs a lot of extra. So I am going to use either let's see here, either this piece of metal pipe or this dowel. And I initially intended to use to use a piece of dowel, so it should fit exactly. It fits real, real nice. So, basically, these parts will fit in here, like so. And then um, I'll get it all prepped and primed and sanded and really smooth. And then I will mold these parts. And um, then I'll be able to make resin copies. So, if anybody's interested in a resin copy, I can get you a set of these for probably about 20 bucks for a set of resin parts. I may actually embed a piece of wood in the inside too to keep them from. Uh, you know, being as fragile, but it came out real good. I'm excited to get these molded up. So uh, as I start to do the prep work on these, I will make a video of how that's done. Uh, real quick, let's take a look. I don't know if this camera will focus here. Probably not. I might have to do this with my other camera. But like I said, this is a, a lot stiffer material than the the last ones that I did. So they they feel stronger. But, uh, yep, there they are. And I'll get them prepped and ready to go, and then uh, we'll check out the molding process next. See you guys soon. So, this is the piece of uh, dowel that's cut down. It is uh, 3 eighths of an inch, I believe, and it's cut to 5 and a quarter inch long. That's the size that will fit into the 3D printed part. So, over here, uh, when I designed it, this is the actual dowel. You can see up here in the corner, I've named it dowel 3 8 by 5 and a quarter long. So that's that piece. You can see here's what printed. It's not quite a scale, it's on my screen. And then the dowel is in my hand. Sorry about my finger in front of the camera. And I'm going to go prime this, this piece right here. I've attached it to the end of a piece of PVC pipe so I can prime it and uh, get it real good. I'm going to get this as smooth out as possible and then I will glue it into the 3D printed parts and get those ready for priming. I'll be back in a bit. Alright I'm back and I have primed and a real quick sanding of this wooden dowel. Now this is just one coat of primer and I'm using um, Duplicolor uh, black filler, not filler primer, just black uh, body primer. It's like a I think it's for cars. I got a whole bunch of it really cheap one time, so I have a ton of it. I prefer the gray primer, it's easier to see the little flubs, but for this, the black is gonna be just fine. And you can see it's pretty smooth right now. So now I will be taking this and gluing the 3D parts onto it, like so. And uh, I'll be priming everything again, and everything will get sanded and uh, made really smooth. I'll be using just regular 
Loctite super glue. And this comes in a few different kinds. There's gel control and ultra gel control. And then the normal, uh, I don't know what it's called. But I really like these containers. They kind of squeeze in here and the glue comes out. And the ultra gel con control is a bit of a thicker glue. So it's a little easier to control. It doesn't run all over the place. And I will be... I'll glue the uh, the large end first. This this isn't rocket science. If you've ever done any any kind of projects, and probably worked with some kind of super glue, and basically you just put that in there, and hopefully hopefully I put enough. There's a little bit of an indent on the inside of the 3D print, so there's a chance it may need a little more. Yeah, a little bit. So I'll put it up on the edges so it'll grab. I don't need a ton, and I could use hot glue for this, but the hot glue can add some thickness to the piece. If it dries a little bit at the bottom, then I can gain a sixteenth of an inch or so on the length, and I don't want to do that. I want this to be uh, nice and accurate, because the scale was determined very carefully, so bottom is in there. I don't know how, how strong this glue is going to be yet. We'll find out. And I will glue the top. And I don't know if you can see it in here, but inside the top there's also a divot so the actual dowel, does, the dowel doesn't touch the whole um, inside bottom flat part. So I only need to put a little glue around the edge and set that into place. So that is what I'm going to do now. carefully not to get anything else on there set that in place and this stuff doesn't set quite as fast as some of the other types of super glue it's pretty quick still um, if there if I was doing this on an open surface I could spray uh, one of the super glue accelerants on there and it would speed it up um, but for now this is gonna be just fine so I'm going to let this set up and then I'm going to prime the rest black and uh, get to sanding it all smooth and making it real nice and pretty for the mold. And you can see the length is uh, the same as the old one, the fully 3D printed piece. So the scale is basically the same, it's just a little wider in a few areas, like right up here. Uh, a few little adjustments made to compensate for the wide angle of the camera lens in comparison to the picture. So that's it. I'll be back in a little bit with this thing fully primed and uh, maybe I'll start staining it. So I'm outside. It's really late at night so I have to talk quietly because I don't want to wake up my neighbors. But um, this is the spray paint I'm using. It's Duplicolor Sandable Primer. And um, I, like I said, I prefer it in gray, but it's actually a very good primer. Now with these 3D parts, since they are slightly porous, um, it's good to not put a really heavy coat on it first. I usually do like a, a thin coat. Let's see if I can open this cap. There we go. And, uh, and then go back and touch it up as I need to. And the thinner the better. It doesn't really take a lot of a lot of primer to prep one of these parts. And definitely don't use a filler primer. It's really bad news. I'm gonna try to shake this without making too much noise. The, um, when you shake your paint, you want to shake them really hard until you can see little dents in the bottom. Alright, so uh, another thing is I'm going to paint just the bottom first, maybe a little touch at the top, but uh, I dangle it by a paper clip and I let that dry and then I'll flip it and it keeps me from getting too many errors in, in the paint. So just a, a light hit.
All right, that should be plenty for the first coat. Um, I'll go back later and flip it and then hit it from the other angle to get any of the parts that I missed. Now, I don't know if this picks up on the camera, but it's uh, it's very thin. There's not enough to start to cause any drips or anything. Again, this would be a lot easier to see if I was using gray primer. But uh, I let this soak in, and I feel like, I'm not sure if this is what's going on, but when I prime this, it seems like the primer loosens up the little bit of the dust on the surface that causes the actual texture and makes it come off very easily, whereas when it's not primed, it's uh, it doesn't really even barely work with sandpaper. It's hard to sand, but just a little bit of primer, just enough to coat the surface, makes that stuff come right off, and then it's uh, really smooth, and there's detail underneath, like on some of my pieces that have uh, little... So some of the pieces, I got cut off there, some of the pieces that had like really fine gnarly lines that they didn't even look like they showed up in the print initially. Once I did this priming step and light sanding, all those, uh, the little lines became visible. It's like they printed, but there's a little layer that sticks to the surface that hides it. And once you knock it off, a lot of that detail is visible. So the light priming seems to work with the best because if you saturate it too much, then it cakes that stuff on and you lose the detail. But if you do it really light, it uh, it's like, I don't know, hardens up the surface just enough to where the sanding becomes easier. So anyway, I'll uh, let this sit, get the second coat, and I'll come back and sand it with some fine sandpaper. We'll check that out. And uh, this is the initial sanding, and now it's about to get its second coat of primer. You can see it's already starting to get a little bit of a shine to it there. And, um, you know, you can still see the detail and a little bit of print lines, but not real bad. And then, like I said, this coat of primer is very thin, so uh, the next coat should fill that in and then um, finish the prep on this. And uh, I may spray it silver with some all clad just so you can see what it looks like after it's prepped, but um, or it may go straight to mold. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'll see you soon. Be back soon. I'm back. Um, on my last video failed. I had one video step in between, but um, here's my knee piston all assembled. I basically did uh, the first coat of primer, a rough sanding, and then one more coat of primer, sand it again. It could probably use one more fine coat, not necessarily needed. Um, and then I hit it with a, just a hit of all clad, just to give it a, a metal look. So you can see how it looks now. Um, and tomorrow evening I will start the molding process and I'll take video of how I set up the uh, the clay up and make the mold walls and probably uh, mixing and pouring the silicone and um, the couple tricks that I do with my silicone molds when I do a block mold that make it key with the um, like the outer mold a little better and I'll show those tomorrow but anyway here's what it looks like uh, basically prepped if you wanted to do a 3d print and not do a um, a uh, molded piece this would probably be sufficient right here just straight from the 3d printer cleaned up and then you could put it on the costume and this is it. I may uh, do a little waxing to this just to get out any tiny little imperfections, but it's pretty much good to go right now. So, so, uh, and it falls on the floor. Anyway, tomorrow, molding, and uh, I'll be back soon. See you guys in a bit.